Okay, have you ever heard the phrase, you're your own worst nightmare? Well, that's what it is when it comes to passwords. Hi, my name is Dale Meredith. I want to spend just a couple minutes here talking to you guys about passwords. It's it's actually my big hot button issue. I get up on a soapbox almost every class I teach, whether it's uh, an ethical hacking class or any of the Microsoft courses that I teach. Whenever we come to security, I'm always lecturing people about passwords. In fact, I do a lot of speeches or talks with communities. Uh, trying to share with them and uh, different things they need to take into consideration when it comes to security. And trust me, passwords, it is our biggest and weakest link. So let me ask you a question. Do you know anybody whose passwords ever gotten hacked before? Well, the passwords are our keys to everything, right? We have passwords on our cell phones. We have passwords on our laptops. We have passwords for our bank account, for our Visa account, for our library. Everywhere we have passwords. Typically, we see that somebody's password got hacked when we all of a sudden, my favorite is when I start getting emails from my nieces and nephews or somebody that I know. And it's like, hey, Dale, check out this URL. And it's nothing to do with anything they would ever ask me to check out. And of course, I send them, I actually have a template of an email that says, look, this is what happened. You got hacked. Uh, Please go through and take care of your passwords. And I give them suggestions. Well, how people get hacked, there's a couple different ways they get hacked. They either get hacked because of guessing. What do you, what does the attacker know about you or what does a hacker know about you? Well, my case, I'm a huge Batman fan and so a lot of attackers or hackers might think that my passwords are Batman based. They're not. They're Spider-Man based. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't use uh, passwords that are uh, something that, that is about me. Another attack that can be used to get your password is called a dictionary attack, which is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to use a dictionary of words and try those against your account and see if it lets me in. And of course, then there's the old good reliable. It's it's not the fastest, but it definitely will eventually get there. It's called a brute force attack. That's where I try every possible combination of alphanumeric and special characters against your password. So here's what I want you to remember when it comes to passwords. You ready? It's all about the length. But Dale, I use special characters. Well, duh. You're not tricking anybody. You're not tricking a, an attacker or a hacker by using the at symbol for an A or a dollar sign for an S or zero for an O or three for an E. Durr. That is so common, such common knowledge that it's actually a detriment to our passwords. Now, there's some really interesting characters, special characters that you can use. I'll show you here in just a few minutes that will throw an attacker for a loop. The other thing you want to do is don't think that it that you can use some word that I would have never heard of. Because I have dictionaries that I plug into my password cracking tools that are based off of English, Spanish, Finnish, Dutch, German, Danish, Klingon. I have dictionary files based off f- fictional characters, Lord of the Ring characters, movie actors, and actresses' names. If it's a real word, it's in a dictionary somewhere. And yes, that would include trending words. Now, as I mentioned before, some of the things you want to avoid is using a password that is representative of you. And especially when it comes to the famous, I need to reset my password, the questions that you get asked. Well, if I've done my reconnaissance correctly... I'm going to know quite a bit of information about you. What's your mother's maiden name? If that is your password reset button, you're in trouble. Or what's your pet's name? In fact, that was how the famous flappening attack took place. That's where all the movie stars, their iCloud accounts got attacked uh, or hacked. And some pictures that were not uh, very flattering of them were exposed on the internet. And it was because the attackers just went through and said, I forgot my password. My name is Jennifer Lawrence. And it says, what's your dog's name? Well, do you think I can find that out? Especially for someone famous. Now, again, I want to reiterate, it's all about the length. And I know that as an IT professional, it's hard because most people, especially executives, they want what? Four character passwords? Well, how how long is it going to take me to hack a four character password? Even a six character, even an eight character password. And I know that also brings in another dilemma. And that is that there are so many passwords out there to try to remember. What do we do? First of all, I never use the same password on my financial information that I might use to log into a website. Uh, Or I actually have several different passwords that I use for different 
financial institutions so that if one gets compromised, I don't have to worry about it being exposed somewhere else. And passwords should rotate. I know it's a pain, especially from the end user's perspective. They're always like, I don't want to have to change my password every 30 days. Well, would you like your information to stay secure? So when I say it's all about the length, this all starts back in the old days with something called the LM hash, in which passwords who had less than 14 characters were extremely easy to, to attack and go after because they actually stored them, even though you had upper and lower case, it stored them all in uppercase and it divided it into two seven character strings. And so I could very easily crack one seven character string and then go after the second character string. So I need you to get in your mind, I need passwords longer than 14 characters. And I know what you're thinking. How are you ever going to teach your end users or you to remember passwords that are that long? Well, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the Super Dale trick. This is a trick that I've been doing for years and it's been pretty reliable for me. I'm going to actually pull up a program now that is going to simulate how long it would take for me to crack your password. This is called the Password Recovery Time Simulator. Uh, and it's, uh, oh, oh man, let me put out a, a warning here for you. First of all, don't ever go to a website that says type in your password. We'll tell you how secure it is. Yeah, trust me, people do it all the time. Don't do that. <laughs> this particular program is self-contained. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to go through and simulate how long it's going to take you to crack a password. But And it shows or it gives a great proof of concept that you can show to upper management as well as your end users. So let's take a password, just basic one. Let's see, you guys, hopefully by now, if you've watched any of my videos, uh, know that I'm a huge Batman fan. So let's say my password is Batman. Well, obviously, if I try to crack this one, it's going to be instantaneously cracked because it's a real word. In fact, even if I try to throw in a special character here, because of the length, it's still instant because again, it doesn't, uh, duh, an at sign is equal to an A. Now, you may be thinking, well, Dale, what if I use two special characters? Okay, well, let's see. Two at signs. Yeah, you're, you're not tricking me. So, and when I say me, I mean the attacker. So, I want to get across again, it's in the length. I'm going to show you a proof of concept here. Uh, first of all, how do we get a password to be extremely long? but yet still something that an end user can remember because that's our biggest issue here is getting end users to support this. So here's what I would recommend. Let's use a naming syntax that we use daily, several times a day. Now, real quick, before I show you this, some passwords and logins, when you, for example, go to an FTP site, it's done in clear text by default. So if somebody is sniffing the network and they were to see the following go across, what do you think they would assume initially? Yeah, they're going to think that someone's surfing a web page. I love using the DNS name syntax as a password syntax. Now, let me show you what I mean. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a real web page. And it doesn't have to be www. It can be yyy. Or I can do, I'll just, I'll keep it simple here. We'll go www dot special character. You guys all know that I love Batman, so I'm going to put I love Batman.com. Gee, how hard is this going to be for me and the end user to remember? It's not going to be that hard. And guess what? I'm going to actually have to travel through time to crack this password. Hopefully my password changes before this time expires. Now, again, I'm going to show you that it's in the length. I'm going to back up here. Let's just back up to www.ilove.com. You'll notice this one takes about 13 minutes and 59 seconds. That's a brute force attack. Okay, let's add a character. Let's add a B, just a simple B. I've jumped up to 13 hours. Let's add another character. How about an A? Hey, I'm up to 34 days. See what's happening with the length? We'll go to a T. Now we're going to get somewhere. There's five years. And if you really want to throw an attacker for a loop, one of my favorite special characters is a space. How about w space w space w dot batman dot com? 
again, hopefully, I change my password, or in this case here, I'm probably going to be dead, before they can hack my password. Again, just to reiterate as well, it doesn't have to be a real website, or it doesn't have to be www. I can do mmm.meredithfamilyrules. I can do a .com, or I can do whatever. I mean, the longer the password... Yeah, this one here, again, time-space continuum... We're going to have to really go forward in time <laughs> in order to crack this one. So now you know how to create a password that is almost virtually impossible to crack. Now, get out there and start using it. And please start showing other people around you how to use it too.